The other day, Intrepid brought back the hype for Ashes of Creation with their monthly livestream showing us new systems, an updated timeline for Alpha 2, and some updated races and much more. But one of the most exciting things to come out of this stream, at least for me, probably not for you, is the fact that I can now tell you that this coming Friday, April 7th, myself and two other Ashes of Creation content creators will be sitting down with Steven Sharif live on the Ashes of Creation Twitch channel with the chance to ask him questions on all things Ashes of Creation related. So hopefully I can finally get some answers to some of those questions you guys have been asking in the comments, but there will be more updates on that later this week, so stay tuned. From there though, we got an updated timeline to Alpha 2, where Steven talks about how they will start internal pre-Alpha 2 testing towards the end of this year, and ramp up the invites eventually bringing on Phoenix Initiative testers, Alpha 1 testers, and then Alpha 2 testers in waves probably in early 2024. So although we still have around a year or so to wait, this is great news because we finally have a full timeline. For the studio update, we know that Intrepid has just hit Milestone 4 in development, which includes things around the implementation of Unreal Engine 5.1.1, fine-tuning some architecture around gameplay systems, revamping some tools, major content progress on the narrative teams, and a lot of optimization passes for the art team. Steven also said that Intrepid had around 2,500 to 3,000 applications for people wanting to work on Ashes of Creation last month, and they ended up hiring maybe seven or eight of those people. But they are planning to rapidly expand their staff this year as we move closer to Alpha 2. The big showcase of this stream, though, was the area of the record of Carfin and showing off some of the story arc systems in the game and talking about how they work. I did a full breakdown of this on my channel already, it's already uploaded, but basically node progression, so if you want to check that out, go for it, but basically node progression and player action can trigger what are called story arcs, which are basically described as packages of NPCs, spawn tables, rare resources, environment changes, and more that are supposed to replace your traditional quest hubs that you expect, as Ashes of Creation is an ever-changing world. We saw one example of the changes in the the environment with the bridge moving into place allowing access to an area that was once off limit before the story arc was triggered. Along with this we saw changes to spawn tables where in Carfin's non-cursed state this area is filled with arcane creatures and in this corrupted state it's filled with those whom use blood magic. When the story arc is triggered players will have a set amount of time to go out and complete the objectives in the zone which Steven said could be like two to three days maybe a bit more maybe a bit less. But when the time ends the next phase of the story arc will be triggered based on what objectives players completed during that previous story arc, which is a very cool way to handle storytelling in an MMORPG and should really make even generic questing much more interesting because you never know what's going to happen. There was a ton of lore information in this video as well, along with lore painted throughout the zone with statues and murals to tell the history of the once great city of Carfin and how the human mages came to be, and it's going to be one of the zones that you'll really want to explore if, if you're a lore nerd like me. From here, we move into the character art where we get better looks at some some of these statues leading up to the Carfin dungeon, some Carfin weapons which look amazing, this weird mushroom thing, the Autumn Collar costume, the Giant Slayer costume, the Alpine Baghorn cosmetic mount, and some updated races, such as the female Dunir Dwarf whom have mutton chops. We knew female dwarves would have the ability to apply beards and now we're seeing this come to life. But more exciting than the bearded lady dwarves were the Veiloon models, which is the first time seeing updated models on these beyond concept art in a long time. Last year in Shepard showed us some face shot concept art of what they intend the Veiloon to look like, and they did a really good job matching up to that as they look identical. We saw a male and female Veiloon, and then we saw what they're calling a Jin style Veiloon as well, which will be a customization option for these humans to make them stand out a bit more from their Kalar human counterparts, and these guys look pretty cool. From the Q&A, we learned that mounts will generally be animals, but they aren't completely ruling out objects like flying carpets or brooms, but there will be no steampunk style style stuff. Apparently, Steven hates steampunk. We also learned that items in your inventory, such as food, won't degrade over time, but you may be able to apply buffs to them that may go away if not consumed. World boss respawns will work in a spawn window, but you won't know exactly when they spawn. This, this will prevent guilds from trying to control the spawn if you know the exact time it's going to pop up. But some of the world bosses will also spawn off story arcs and such, which will not be specific time at all, but be upon the event completion. We learned that Alpha 2 will start with the core 
gameplay loops as well, such as nodes, crafting, player progression, story arcs, and things like that. And they will patch in some of these smaller things throughout the Alpha 2 testing phase. And lastly, Steven is very aware of the tech updates, such as Unreal Engine 5.2 and the delays that they cause. And Intrepid will eventually stop updating the engine until post-launch, as the more they customize it and tweak it, the harder these updates are to apply to the game. But they aren't at that point yet, and with that being said, he did not comment on whether or not they were updating to 5.2. If you made it this far into the video, then I assume you enjoy this content a bit, so please do me a favor and click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up for the latest Ashes of Creation content. Otherwise, if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in all the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more to come.